This presentation is on weld defects, specifically cracks. It's designed to give non-welding people a little idea about what kind of cracks can occur in welding. Welding from the outside looks like it's a very easy process and there's nothing that's going to go wrong. Just weld it. Well, oftentimes things go sideways on us and don't come out with uh, the way we wanted them to. And one of the defects that shows up in welds a lot of the times is cracks. There's a number of different varieties of cracks and a number of different causes for cracks. But the main gist of this is to help the non-welder type people understand that there are various types of cracks. And we're going to hopefully expand your vocabulary in regards to weld defects, specifically cracks. Acknowledgements. I take a lot of the information in these PowerPoint presentations from U.S. Army and the U.S. Navy. So here's a couple of courses that I rated. I also hit up some Department of Transportation information that's out there in regards to cracks and welding. So, But anyways, this is where I pilfered the information from, your tax dollars at work. If you uh, need a good source of information to put things together with, these are some good places to go find it. Introduction to cracking. As I said on the opening slide, um, I'm just trying to give you guys a little vocabulary and some uh, just a touch of insight into cracking that's a result of welding operations. There's been all kinds of books written in regards to what causes these kinds of crackings, further definitions of cracking, you know, stress corrosion cracking, hot cracking, cold cracking, how to fix the cracking. There's a whole universe of material there in regards to cracking. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole. The intent here is just to give you an idea, a quick and dirty one pass through this, give you a little bit of knowledge in regards to the various kinds of cracks so you can identify them uh, and then maybe chase down an answer, you know, use your Google search methods and chase down an answer in regards to what's causing your cracking because it's way too broad of a, you know, subject to cover in one or two YouTube videos. Cracks are generally planar discontinuities with a large ratio of length to opening displacement. Cracks may be formed at elevated or at low temperatures, may exist in the weld metal, the heat affected zone, or the base material, and may take a variety of orientations. Cracking in its several forms is usually regarded as the weld discontinuity most detrimental to performance. A crack by its very nature is sharp at its extremities and thus acts as a severe stress concentrator. In addition, the presence of cracking signifies a loss of metallurgical control. Therefore, cracks, regardless of size, are normally not permitted by most fabrication codes. A crack in a weldment is considered to be a fracture of the metal resulting from a stress condition. Cracks occur as the result of many causes and are found in three locations. In the weld, at the fusion line between the weld and the base metal, you can see I've got that, that's the red line there. And then in the heat affected zone of the base metal. And the heat affected zone is just what it sounds like. It's the portion of the base metal that has been affected metallurgically and mechanically by the heat that you've introduced into the component from welding. So once again, three places where you can find cracks in the weld, the fusion line between the weld and the base metal, and in the heat affected zone of the base metal. Cracks are considered to be the most potentially dangerous of all defects, particularly surface cracks, and virtually all specifications prohibit the acceptance of any crack that is detectable by normal methods of examination. That's telling us cracks aren't good. You're not going to be able to have a, a crack that's acceptable. AWS D1.1, the structural code, cracks are not acceptable. The ASME codes, cracks are not acceptable. So that's why we're kind of taking a look at this so you can understand there's different types of cracks. But none of them are good and they're not acceptable. 
Cracks occur in various directions in various locations. Factors causing cracks, temperature gradients that cause thermal stresses in weld zone that develop during solidification and contraction of the weld bead and the surrounding structure. Variation in the composition of the weld zone, embrittlement of grain boundaries, and the inability of the weld metal to contract during cooling. Here you can see various locations and some nomenclature for cracks. We've got number one is the root crack. Number two is the fusion zone crack. Number three is the fusion line crack in the HAZ. Number four is the longitudinal crack in the weld. Number five is an underbead crack in the HAZ. Number six is a transverse crack in the HAZ. Number seven is transverse cracks across the weld. And number eight is a crater crack. Cold cracking occurs mainly after the temperature of the weldment has returned to ambient conditions. It may occur immediately or it may be a week later and can occur without loading. Cold cracking can occur from the stress of loading and may result from stress concentrations caused by notch effects of the surface discontinuities. Gradual stress relieving of other sections of the weldment where a different microstructure may exist can increase the stress on the weld area and result in cold cracking. Here we can see we've got a longitudinal crack. A longitudinal crack runs along the length of the weld bead. Transverse cracks are perpendicular to the direction of the weld. They are generally the result of longitudinal shrinkage stresses acting on the weld metal of low ductility. Here's a sketch I pulled out of a Department of Transportation welder training guide or a welder inspector training guide. Um, here you can see the difference between a longitudinal and a transverse crack as they're sitting side by side. Longitudinal crack runs longitudinally and the transverse crack runs transverse. It runs across the weld. So that's what you're talking about when they're talking about longitudinal versus transverse cracking. Here's an example of a toe crack. Toe cracks occur in the base metal at the toe of the weld. Root cracks are similar to toe cracks except that they occur at the root of the weld. Root cracks may be in the weld metal or in the base metal. As you can see, it's got its name because it's the root crack. It starts at the root of the weld. Underbead cracks occur in the heat affected zone underneath a bead and do not extend to the surface of the metal. Underbead cracks can be detected by x-ray or ultrasonic examination. You can see these cracks can't be seen from the surface. They're underbead cracks. They're under the bead. So the best way to find these guys is generally using um, the volumetric ex examination methods. X-ray or ultrasonic will generally find these types of cracks. A crater crack is usually in the shape of an X, which is found in the crater at the termination of a weld. Crater cracks occur in the crater when the welding arc is terminated prematurely. Crater cracks are hot cracks that are caused when the center of the weld pool becomes solid before the outside of the weld pool, thus pulling the center apart during cooling and causing cracking. Here are a couple of different examples of crater cracks. On the far left, we've got a transverse crater crack. Middle, we've got a longitudinal crater crack. And then on the far right, we've got a star crater crack. They're all crater cracks, but it's just talking about the, you know, the orientation or giving you a further um, description of what kind of crater crack it is. They've all got to be repaired, and they're all equally bad. But if you ever have to write up a disposition or whatever, you can... Um, give your crater crack a little further naming, a couple of adjectives to throw in there to give it a better description. Here we've got a shrinkage crack. The majority of cracking is the result of shrinkage strains that occur when the weld metal cools. If the contraction is constricted, the strain can induce shrinkage cracks in the weld metal. So this is a fillet weld where we had a shrinkage crack in the weld metal. 
Maybe it was too restrained. Maybe we put too big a weld in there. Maybe it was too cold. But here you've got a shrinkage crack. Basic crack prevention measures. Basic crack prevention measures are change the joint design to minimize stresses from the shrinkage during cooling. Also reduce the width of the weld passes. Change the parameters, procedures, and sequence of the welding processes. Preheat the components to be welded. Avoid rapid cooling of the welded components. Temper welds quickly after welding. So to me, the big ones here, you could cure a lot of ills with, you know, the joint design. If you get the joint design figured out, and don't put in huge, wide weld passes. Just stack them in there, little tight passes. And then preheat the component to be welded. You know, if you're welding in the middle of Siberia or northern Canada in January, there's a chance you could have cracking issues if you don't preheat the component before welding it. But if you preheat it and then you, you know, avoid rapid cooling, you're, you're going to have a good chance of success and not have uh, cracking issues in your welds, the HAZ, or on that fusion line. So. My name is Gary Pace, PE, CWI, out of Katy, Texas. There's my contact info if you have any questions in regards to this um, presentation.